Добрий день. Добрий день. Добрий день. Добрий день. Можна починати? Можна. I am absolutely astounded by how many people came. Я, я сам дивуюся, що по обіді погана погода, що так багато людей могли тут прийти сьогодні. Видно, що це є наші достойні гості, що притягнули таку велику кількість громади. Do tema. Um, do, do tema. Očevedno je tema. Um, so, officially I'd like to welcome you here to what I hope will be a, a very interesting discussion. Uh, I guess first I should clarify for the record that though this is being held in the UNF Hall, uh, it's not an officially sponsored UNF event and whatever opinions we have here may not necessarily reflect the opinions of uh, the Ukrainian National Federation. Uh, the original idea actually was the brainchild of one of our panelists, Dr. Harechuk, who felt uh, strongly that it was time we had a dialogue and re-examine the current nature of the diaspora Ukrainian community's relationship with the original home country, Ukraine. We managed to get a, a several other like-minded people, not necessarily in agreement, uh, but people who were also, I guess, concerned uh, uh, on this particular subject. What we'd like to do today uh, is to delve into two important aspects of this relationship between the diaspora here in Canada and Ukraine. Uh, first of all, uh, as most of you know, Ukrainian organizations in Canada, whatever political, religious, or cultural stripe, have for most of their existence here in Canada striven to keep alive the hope of a free and independent uh, and prosperous Ukraine. That hope was realized in 1991, and since then there's been a lot of time, a lot of effort, and a lot of resources that have been dedicated to help build a successful civil society in Ukraine. Sadly, almost 20 years after independence, there is growing disenchantment, both here and in Ukraine, over the fact that Ukraine seems to have lost its way, and is, as some claim, on the way to being a failed state. The economy is in shambles, corruption is rampant, uh, the government ineffective and the population is deeply disillusioned with what has happened since the Orange Revolution. So the fundamental question being asked is whether all the aid and assistance being provided to Ukraine by both the Ukrainian diaspora as well as the Canadian government through CEDA and other agency is it doing any good. Many feel that it is either wasted, misappropriated, or outright stolen by corrupt officials over in Ukraine. Would we not be better off maybe suspending all aid until they get their house in order? That's one question. <coughs> the second related theme we would like to explore today is whether Ukrainian organizations in Canada are really fulfilling their mandate by focusing most of their time, resources, and efforts on helping Ukraine, as opposed to strengthening and developing the Ukrainian community here in Canada. As we all know, a large proportion of the younger generations of Ukrainian Canadians have drifted away from Ukrainian organizational life, ostensibly because their priorities and interests are more oriented to life here in Canada than to what is happening in Ukraine. So the second question to be asked is whether Ukrainian organizations here in Canada, be it the UNF or the Ukrainian Canadian Congress or whatever, be focused mostly on the needs of Ukrainians here in Canada and let the folks in Ukraine solve their own problems. It would seem from the experience of the past couple of decades that Ukrainian politicians over in Ukraine don't much want to take our advice or listen to what we have to say anyway. And I know I've I lived for five years in Ukraine over the past decades. I know a lot of people that have worked uh, officially and unofficially in various programs in Ukraine. And uh, I think a lot of us would say that the, the people over there uh, don't particularly want our advice. Um, I'm sure that many of you have opinions to share on all of this, and you will have the opportunity to do so. First, though, we will begin with the formal part of this panel discussion. We are privileged today to have Professor Dubomir Lutsyuk with us as keynote speaker, and he will kick things off uh, with his thoughts on the current situation and the topic of, of this uh, panel. Dubomir is Professor of Political Geography at the Royal Military College in Kingston. He is the chair of the Ukrainian Canadian Civil Liberties Association. He is the author or editor of over a dozen books, writes frequently for a number of major Canadian newspapers, and often appears as a commentator on both the CBC and the BBC. Subsequent to Professor Luchuk's remarks, I will ask each of our three panelists in turn to comment and add their own views on today's topic. 
allowing, of course, Professor Lutzuk to respond as necessary. Subsequent to that round, I will give each of the panelists an opportunity to comment and respond on any of the other panelists' remarks. We will then conclude by opening up the floor to anyone in the audience who may want to comment or question either Professor Lutzuk or any of our panelists. I guess it's probably appropriate this time for me to introduce to you the members of our panel. First of all, uh, please welcome Dr. Richard Harechuk, who is the prime organizer of this event. Dr. Harechuk has been uh, deeply involved in providing medical and humanitarian aid to Ukraine since it became independent and is intimately familiar with the political and social situation in the country. We're also privileged to have Miroslava Oleksiuk, the creator and editor of likely the most authoritative and popular source of Ukrainian news on the internet, Iposhta. I'm sure you all have a subscription to Iposhta. <clears throat> Lastly, we're also pleased to have with us Viktor Hetmanchuk, Executive Director of Ukrainian Canadian Social Services, a non-profitable, charitable organization that has been serving the Ukrainian community in Toronto for some 55 years. All of our panelists are intimately familiar with both the Ukrainian community in Canada as well as the current situation in Ukraine. Uh, Thank you, good afternoon. Uh, I'll be presenting mainly in English, uh, but as was pointed out, I'll be happy to answer questions from other panelists or audience members in Ukraine later. As was said, I'm a geographer. And I think everyone in this room, probably at one point or another in their lives, had a geography course or took some geography. As a geographer, I'm interested in place. I'm interested in the way in which the world is divided up into places. I'm interested in patterns. I'm interested in why and when and how and what for things are where they are on the earth. I'm also interested in the way things relate to each other across space. So I'm interested in migration, and not just the migration of people, but also of ideas and goods and notions. Now, every one of us in this, map, in this room has worked with the basic tool that every geographer uses, which is a map. And a map is just a way of looking at our world and taking all the complexities of that world and simplifying it on a two-dimensional piece of paper. Of course, we live in a three-dimensional world, so the moment you take something and put it on a map, you are simplifying, you are distorting, you are selecting. Different kinds of maps. We're all aware of these maps. It's a basic tool. There are maps that are small scale maps, and on small scale maps, objects are relatively small. Large scale maps, objects are relatively large. Today, as a geographer, as a student of political geography with an interest in the migration of Ukrainians to Canada, I'm going to use, if you like, a small scale map. I'm going to try to outline some of the broad, great patterns that I see as being important to our community here in Canada, to the Ukrainian diaspora, and in relationship with uh, Ukraine. Now, I want to make it very clear at the beginning, like I just said, all <coughs> maps are distortions. They are selections. They are never complete. You have to always assume that the person that's giving you a map that, say, shows you where the Ukrainian halls are in Toronto wants you to get to the hall. But there are some people who make maps that show you how not to get to things, who try to confuse you with maps. Today, you're going to have to listen to me and decide whether I'm speaking to you from my heart uh, in the hopes that what I say to you will help us as a community, that I have a good purpose, a good intention. Or you may say, he's distorting things. He's giving us a map to mislead. That I'll leave to you. What I'm going to do is try to tell you a little bit of a story about our community, Nasha Ramada, and the cause. And if you looked at the poster that invited you to come here today, that was the subject, the cause, as if we all know what the cause is. And as we were being introduced, there was a reference to the cause of the Ukrainian diaspora being Ukraine's independence and freedom. 
I submit to you that the two are not the same thing. 